What is the best piece of advice that you've received? My dad once told me, half jokingly, that life fast die young doesn't work if you don't die young. He has a bunch of health problems now due to not taking care of himself when he was younger. It really opened my eyes to how the way I treat my body now will have repercussions decades in the future. After hearing that phrase and seeing his health issues accumulate, I've started eating much healthier and exercising more frequently. More people need to practice this. All the young people I have met who try to stunt to impress people, all to end up with permanent injuries. People who are now addicts with organ failure in their 30s because drugs were cool. Treat things as an opportunity not an expectation. If you're expecting a certain outcome then you'll generally be disappointed but if you are looking at it as an opportunity for things to go one way or another you'll usually be happier with the outcome and not stress over it if it's negative. It's a lot easier to see silver linings or benefits in things when you're not expecting the outcome to be a certainty and you'll be a lot more appreciative of said outcomes when you're not already starting at a benchmark. Go to keep this in mind when watching any future Star Wars film. It will still be here tomorrow. Wisdom from my boss on having a huge to-do list at work and not stressing over it. Get done what you can today. What you don't finish will be there to work on tomorrow and you don't need to take the mental baggage of having a big to-do list home with you. That's a great boss. Extremely rare too. Unless you're a rock star in your field, your connections at work are most likely going to present the best opportunities for you down the line. Networking matters. It's not what you know, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Measure twice, cut once. I actually sometimes recall the moment my uncle told me that in a conversation when I was maybe 13 or 14. I think we were talking about it literally, cause I did have a woodworking class in school at the time. It has helped me be more cautious when doing certain things though, like when doing a task where I can't redo it if I frick up, I'll be super super careful at each stage to be very aware of what's going on. Once you learn something, no one can take it away from you. It really resonated with me, since I grew up with instability and uncertainty. Dementia enters the room. If you can't hide it, point to it, as in. If you slip and fall on your butt in front of a group of people, stand up and take a bow. If you make an embarrassing typo, make a joke about it. Acting embarrassed only makes embarrassing situations worse. Embrace it and laugh about it. If you wouldn't let the people you despise living in your house, why let them live in your head? Good one. When dating, and wondering if you're ready to marry someone, ask yourself would I be with this person if I were blind? Given to me by one of the greatest, most humble men I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. Honest work is better pay. Parents taught me this, and I always applied it when doing indoor painting and repair work. Sometimes, my customers would figure out little things that I did later on, like taking doorknobs off before painting just in case they wanted to change out knobs. Word of mouth travels fast when the person they're paying good money to doesn't screw them and pays attention to detail. That's the best advice. That's how my husband works too. Don't recall where I heard this but, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. OP, since you're still young always remember this as the people who you surround yourself with especially in your young adult life will have a profound impact on the rest of your adulthood. Surrounding yourself with driven and intelligent people will influence you positively. Yes, I freaking love this. You can't climb higher if you're sitting at the top of a ladder. Love, trust and respect is what you need in a quality long term relationship. All have to be present and they have to be mutual. My mum. Love without trust and respect is not really love. Respect is what you need in any relationship, romantic or otherwise, even in the relationship you have with yourself. And trust stems from that. Marriage isn't 50 stroke 50, it's 100 stroke 100. You don't split duties and responsibilities. You both give your all, regardless of how much your spouse is giving. There will be times when they won't give as much, out of sickness or sadness or whatever reason. Instead of feeling like they should do more, just pick up the slack. There will be times when you can't do your share either. Dishes need doing, do them. Instead of asking whether they are doing enough, ask if you can do more. Serve them, give them yourself. If both people do this, it will be a happy marriage.
This is predicated on trusting your spouse. If you don't trust them then chipping in more constantly is eventually going to cause issues. So constantly and actively choose to build that trust and communication. We judge ourselves by our reasons and others by their actions. Try to remember this when someone judges you for something you did or before judging someone else for their actions. It wasn't advice per se, but whenever I was going through a tough situation, my parents would always say it's temporary. Whatever hardship I'm going through is temporary. It has helped me so much to put things in perspective. I'm trying to help my boyfriend right now by telling him that his job is abnormally hard right now but that it's temporary and in a couple of weeks it'll be back to normal. When my dad passed away someone told me, I'm sure you hear a lot of people saying how sorry they are and stuff like that. So I won't tell you that. I will tell you this. Your dad may have passed from this world but he's still alive in your memories. Alive in the people's lives he's influenced, talked to, and met. He's alive in you, your family, and your friends. He's alive going forward because he'll influence your future kids' lives. He'll influence your life going forward. Your will to live might be broken right now but you have to fear your dad, your mom, and your family. Keep his memory alive because a person dies twice, once in the real world and once when they are remembered for the last time. Make sure that last time isn't in your lifespan. That really helped me through some dark times. As the mother of two girls who lost their father, I will keep this in mind for when they get older and can digest it properly. Thanks for posting it. If you can afford to pay a professional to do something, you do it. That way, if something goes wrong, your wife can blame them instead of you. My late father-in-law. At first I thought you were suggesting I do it myself instead of the professional when you said you do it. If you want to be successful at any job, you need two out of these three things. Show up on time. Be nice to people at your work and be good at your job. Can confirm. Always on time. Never call in, good at my job, hate my co-workers. I have a couple, if you don't ask, the answer is always number gramps. You can show someone the better path at the fork in the road, but ultimately you have to let them walk alone, aren't Jen? Don't be an idiot, before I'm about to do something I think, would an idiot do that and if they would, I do not do that thing. An idiot would breathe probably. Either you can accept your situation or change it. I had a really tough time making friends freshman year of high school, and I'd come home crying to my mom every day because I was so lonely. She let me cry for a bit and then told me this. The next day I went to school and started talking to people, because I figured I had nothing to lose. I apply it to so much now, either I have to fix what's bothering me or I have to accept it and move on. Wallowing around feeling sorry for myself was unhealthy and not beneficial in the least. Someone once showed me a table that if you start investing $100 month from age 1830, by age 65 you'll have way more money than if you invest $100 month from age 3065. Start working on that compound interest while you're young. I was lucky that my first boss at my first real job after college told me to invest in the 401k even though I was barely making ends meet. He told me to put something in and get the employer matching. It seemed futile for a long time because my salary was so low. But with compounding and salary increases it just builds wealth slow and steady. If you think of it like taxes you don't even notice. My dad gave me a lot of gems over the years but the one I come back to most often is those who can't build themselves up, tear others down. It's really helped me get perspective when someone is being disrespectful, mean, etc etc. I tell myself it's not really about me, it's about their own internal struggles. When I was an apprentice electrician I kept calling up my supervisor to make sure what I was doing was correct. One day out of frustration he told me to just make the freaking decision if you get it right everyone is happy and if you get it wrong we can fix it best advice I've ever got. Remember when you are fighting with your partner it is not you versus them. It's you both versus the problem. Doesn't matter if one of you is right. Fix the problem. Alternatively, I was told once, after considering myself a fairly honorable man, when I did something wrong, a friend told me being a good man isn't a thing. It's a journey. Being good or honorable is also not a place but a direction. A thousand steps in the good direction and one step back is still going backwards. 
Sometimes, it's definitely worth paying attention to what the other kids do, and doing that, as a hopeless, half-retarded, semi-autistic kid with zero social awareness. This was absolutely 100% what my father needed to tell me, and I'm glad I finally listened when I did. It shaped a lot of what came later and really set me on the path towards becoming a, somewhat, functional adult. Sometimes I need to remind myself though where I came from and go easy on myself for where I am now. I came a long way, but I'm not perfect. It's okay not to be a flawless person and do weird crap just because sometimes, you just do the best you can, you know, it's okay. Decisions about work should be the most selfish ones you make. You are selling them the remaining days of your life. Don't undervalue them. 1. Hold your own standards high and the standards of the people you surround yourself with higher. That way you avoid wasting time on people who wouldn't treat as great as you treat them. 2. Always surround yourself with people who are better than yourself, more intellectual, more athletic, quicker etc. That way your peers challenge you to improve yourself rather than you begin to believe you are the best you can be. At my graduation party, we had those little advice cards that people write on and they put in a box for the gradual to read later on. My grandmother's was the simplest, but it's also the only one I kept and still turn to frequently. Do what makes you happy. A wise old owl lived in an oak. The more he saw the less he spoke. The less he spoke the more he heard. Why can't we all be like that wise old bird? Never write a letter and send when you are angry. In fact, don't write anything down that likely will come back and bite you on the ass. Be circumspect when faced with rage and for frick's sake say please and thank you, my mum. To that point my mom always said don't write anything down that you don't want everyone to read. Solid advice. And I try not to even send angry texts. I don't need to be reminded of a moment that I was mad. In college a mentor told me, the habits you establish now last you the rest of your life. If you think you're too busy now to prioritize your mental and physical health, establish hobbies, engage with friends, just wait until you're working full time trying to balance it all. She was right, the things I prioritized then are the easiest to maintain now, everything else still takes a back burner. Compete against yourself, not against others. Stop trying to compare yourself to other people because you will always find someone who is better at something that you do or who is more successful at whatever career you've chosen. Instead compare yourself to the person you were yesterday last week a year ago. Look at that person and ask yourself am I a better, more skilled, more complete person than I was back then? Sometimes, it's okay to not be okay. I can't even remember where this is from but dang it helped. Reminds me that when I feel down or anxious or anything, I have a right to feel that way and there's not always something you can do about it. From you both Sidus off the moon, regarding a person who was being unfaithful, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. No one accepts your limitations, everyone has them. My senior year of college, one of my favorite professors said this to a room full of soon to be graduates. This is something I have always held with me to help me rationally make big decisions with furthering my career and education. It made me look at these decisions logically to see if I was able to handle them within my ability and intelligence. You have two ears and one mouth. Use them in the proportions you have them. You find you take in so much more information if you listen to the world, rather than trying to speak over it. Always keep the utilities, lease, and vehicle in your name, and have a bank account in your name only. That way, no matter what goes sideways in your relationship, or how badly, nobody can put you and your kids out, turn off the heat or water, etc. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.